This is where she wants her dream stream. Perfectly lined up with the conservatory. I'm thinking like a 12 by 12 pond that it falls into an upper pool and then kind of meandering down and twisting along into the pond. We are out here in Ontario, Oregon. We are finally building Laura's Dream Street, the most anticipated project of the year. We've been planning this for so long, and what's awesome is these guys can finish each other's sentences. Everybody knows what they're doing. In three days, we're gonna have flowing water, and it's gonna completely transform this space like nothing else. And this is gorgeous, you guys. Oh, that looks so good. Look at that. Oh, my God. have the dream team to build the dream stream. Are you excited? Yes, so excited. It's awesome because this is our third time collaborating. The first time you didn't, a little rough, yeah, a little bit. didn't really trust us. The second time you pretty much said okay and now you're pretty relaxed sure. this time. Yep. I've never seen Laura more relaxed and it's because you guys have been planning this thing for a long time. Well, Aaron. we've been talking about it for a long time. I think uh, Laura and Aaron share in the same vision. We just mm -hmm. kind of see things the same way. Okay. She's actually more excited now than she was the second time we did the pond. And, the, and you said Benjamin and Samantha, this is like the highlight yeah, of the summer. Year. <laughs> of the year. Yes, he's out here somewhere. Even yeah. better. So these are all the certified Aquascape contractor artists of the year. So all of these guys have earned recognition by their peers as being the top in the world for their region and the top in the world overall. And we have to choose one guy this week that after we build this together is going to be the reigning 2024 Aquascape Artist of the Year. We're going to all decide on Saturday night we're going to go live and here's the crazy thing on Saturday night this thing's going to be flowing we're going to have we're going to be standing in the middle of a stream about right here right Brian? Yeah, mm -hmm. Right about here. Wow. Well we have so much to do uh, I think before we break off into teams because the only way we're going to tackle this is to break up into different teams. We've got to figure out a pumping situation because we have two two more pumps going in this so we have to deconstruct some of the intake bay over there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to see a liner on we have to dig this whole thing out all that's got to get done before the liner even gets in and then we have to move 60 tons of boulders <laughs> all kinds of stuff needs to happen but before we can do any of that we have to mark it out all right and uh and i think we're changing the design a little, a little bit, bit. <laughs> what it. oh yeah of course yes, always <laughs> and we'll probably change it while we're, we're, we're no, digging 100 all right all right well, so we ready to mark it out yeah i think i need uh my man ben where's ben come on ben ben you ready to start marking some stuff yeah. out Okay. Oh, you did such a good job before. We're gonna do the same thing. Okay. All right, you wanna follow me? All right, come on. All right, so you can see these guys are eager to go and everybody's just jumping in right away. We've got to move a couple plants over here. We've got to find that liner. Last time we were out here, we anticipated that we were going to do this big stream. We bunched up a bunch of liner back behind the rock over there. So we got to get the rock moved, the plants moved, some of the soil moved so we can uh, find that liner. Then we can start digging all this out. We've got to start draining the pond so we can figure out a new pumping situation back over in there. We've got to figure out a place to put all this soil. There's a lot going on. And you can see everybody just grab shovels and is starting to go. Go, go, go. So what is this for? So this, right now, we took out the smaller of the two big rocks. Yep. What I really love about it is because the koi are carp, they're river fish. Yep. They're gonna love this current. She actually said they were trying to swim over this rock already. We knew they would. Yeah, so they, the fish can come up here, boom, right over the wetland, and then bam, into the main channel. For a split second, yeah. you look just like a koi to me. You were like, oh yeah? Oh. <laughs> I just had to wiggle the fingers a little bit more, right? He is the pond guy.
So on the dream stream, we have two areas that you're crossing. One over there by the original pond, which is supposed to be more of like stepping stones, kids hopping from one rock to the other. And then we wanted to do more of a solid bridge where everybody could cross, where you didn't have to leap across from one rock to another. And so we chose this rock. It's not exactly what we were looking for, but it turned out to be so cool. People are gonna come in this way, walk off right through here, and then continue right onto this pathway over here. Right now, we're just trying to get the rock to fit around it, make sure we direct people in the way they wanna go, and then we'll start rocking the rest of this city. Think so far i am stunned <laughs> in like the best way possible i cannot believe how much this crew got done today uh it's incredible to watch them work and it's incredible to see this space start to form up and i'm so excited for tomorrow and everybody's just working great together yeah. like to see the synergy mm -hmm. between everybody is just fantastic Jack, I wanna, like we moved the line of sight originally, it was in that center pathway there, but then they put the sundial in there and then Aaron was saying that's just not a major thoroughfare anymore. They use the side ones a lot more. Okay. So I wanna line up the waterfall, the main waterfall with this pathway, <clears throat> which ultimately lines up with the house. That, yeah, you that's, can see it Yeah, you can windows. see people walking. Yeah. So if I take this pathway. Almost where Ralph's standing. Yes, if I take this pathway, bring it straight for a little bit, then twist it hard over to our bridge. Yep. The pathway lines up the line of sight to this, and then the pool for the wetland keeps it unobstructed so she can't landscape yeah. a bunch of stuff in front. All right, so what we got going on right here, we have an elevation change coming out of the wetland down into the main part of the stream. So these guys have pulled these rocks back a little bit so we can overlap this liner down over top of the existing pond liner. We don't have to do a true seam here because we have enough of an elevation change that we can just overlap. As long as that's done correctly, it'll be totally fine. Everybody is going crazy right now. We got John over there doing a special separate project. Can't even tell you about it. We got Jack, Ralph, and Chris, and Dan working on the waterfall down here. We are flying right now, despite the fact that one of our machines is still dead. All right, put them in, buddy. came up to me and said, what are you gonna do with all that? But we still have a lot to do. Like, it's awesome to see all of this finish. Yeah. Right, Greg came right. in. You love the way it looks when it's all rinsed down, yeah. like everybody does, because it really Beautiful. brings out the beauty in the stone. Yes. Um, we still have the wetland to build. This waterfall is getting buttoned up. Yesterday seemed hectic, but today seems like really hectic. No? So? It all just seems like, <laughs> what is going on? You're bringing, this is here. you're bringing in more wood. We don't use it today, we'll use it next year. I'm thinking that's a good idea. <laughs>
The dream screen is born! It is wetland time. So we've got this wetland in. It's gonna be 12 aqua block smalls on the very bottom. And then going the next level is something new that incorporates aqua blocks and bio balls. So the bio balls are actually inside the large aqua block. That way on the top, we're using a lot less gravel. So next step right now is a piece of fabric and we're gonna start putting all those uh, items in place. Got another wetland in. I think it was 100% necessary. I think tomorrow, as easy as we thought tomorrow was gonna be, it'll still take us right to the very end of the day. Four o'clock, we'll have it running. But that's plants, that's everything graded. That's the pathway kind of figured in, not done, but figured in. Uh, retaining walls. Uh, I know Laura and Aaron are looking to get another like 15, 20 foot spruce tree spaded in back here. So that'll wow. be a, an instant backdrop. Nice. Like around a 10, we'll be ready for them, I told them, Jack. <laughs> Great job today, guys. Let's, Let's go. go eat. Let's, Let's go eat. eat. Last day on the dream stream, close to being finished. I'm as excited as I hope all of you guys are excited to see what this thing is gonna look like being turned on. We got Ben right behind you, working on setting the bio poles, which means we're just about done. This is the last frame rock, we got spillstone going in, and then we're just buttoning up edges. It's gonna be awesome. There we go, beautiful. All right, what number? One. Number one. We had a great team hiding back here in the corner having fun. We just test ran the jets and those are cool for the kids. They're gonna have a blast. We're really just tightening up all the little nooks and crannies. These guys are trying to make this one where the kids don't want to climb in it and make this one where the kids do want to climb in it. And then obviously when the jets are off in there, we want it to all look like a nice, just subdued, subtle water features. Easy peasy, man, we got this. Look at them go. So Jim, Oregon Aquatics, all the way from Eugene, right? Right. Welcome to Garden Answer. Welcome, this is so exciting. See, they've got some, this is this is like Christmas for a gardener. Yes. Wait till you see this selection. How many different varieties of plants do we get? A half dozen plus the different water lilies, so probably a dozen. All right, let's open up and <gasps> Christmas morning. This 
can't wait for the vault door I, to open. I see some beautiful thalia. <laughs> Okay, so Laura, this is very exciting for me because we have an aquatic plant expert for 44 years mm -hmm. with us. Myself as a pond expert, you know, as seen the number one problem when I visit ponds is that the ponds are doing, the lilies are doing exactly what you see right here, which is they're root bound in the containers. So this is the tubers actually jumping over and their their growth is being suffered as we showed yeah. from the experiment that you did with a fox fire, right Jim? Correct. Okay, so this is a fox fire grown in the exact same pots that they come from the growers at, but it dwarfs its growth because it doesn't have enough room for the roots. Now, there's two different lilies here. We have a tropical and a hardy. The hardy has a rhizome that will actually run long, so we're gonna plant it on the edge. The tropical goes down, so we plant it right in the middle, right, Jim? Right. And so we have our brand new fabric pots that are just coming out this winter for next year, for next season. This will allow the nutrients to go into and it will allow the hair roots to actually penetrate. So it'll be a healthier, stronger plant that we're gonna put these in than the plastic pots that they, they, they come in. We like fabric pots a lot. They allow the plant to breathe a lot more, the roots, and that's not as important in the summertime when they're producing a lot of oxygen on their own. But in the wintertime, especially with the hair roots growing through the fabric, it allows the oxygenation process, the, the gas aeration process, to exchange and helps keep them healthy through the winter. We have 180 day fertilizer here, but we have two modulars a way of dispensing it. So for a, a plant that we're completely replanting like this, we're gonna just actually grab a couple handfuls, I'll let Jim do that to put it in. And then when it's in the pond, we have these brand new fertilizer oh. capsules that you can actually just put right in and then they dissolves, but it's easy to put in when lilies are in the water. Mm. Okay, so Jim, why don't we go ahead and for the first one, why don't we do um, the hardy lily? Okay, you could get three plants out of this, but we're gonna get one really big one instead. Because I can't get this all the way down to the bottom very easily, we're just gonna break it up a little bit, which actually it's, it's good for the roots anyway to do that. So maybe two handfuls. And what yes. we don't wanna do is get it too close to the edge. But there it is. Get some soil over the top. And look at the difference in sizes between the hard plastic that it comes from the grower in and the 16th inch fabric pot from Aquascape. Yeah. This, this, by the way, is the sturdiest fabric pot I've ever seen. So it'll, it'll last a long, built, long time. Built by pond builders. So that one's ready for gravel. Let's do the, let's do the tropical lily okay. now, the Foxfire. Two handfuls of the time release. Now, the time release fertilizer in Oregon here, you only have to do, it's 180 day fertilizer and it only grow, goes when the water's over 60 degrees, is it? Yeah. 180 degree fertilizer will work for all year. It'll be perfect. Okay. Right in the middle. Yeah. Star of Siam, same as that, it's a Star of Siam. Yeah, look at the difference because it was in a pot this big versus the pot that it came from the grower in. This plant now. I didn't realize it grew that fast. It's the biggest problem that I see out there is under you know, root bound plants. What we're working on here, we're starting to do all the edging. Uh, they prep for uh, this waterfall back here. So make sure we have these wheat pockets right here. So instead of just backfilling with soil, especially because we have a weird overlap here, we're transitioning with soil. We like to put a little bit of river rock in there. That way, if any of the water that is meant to stay up over the waterfall, if any of it squeaks by this way, instead of leaking out of the liner, it'll actually have somewhere to go through and then get down to the lower pool.
This is your fountainscape. Go ahead, plug it in. <laughs> That's for you guys. <laughs> this is the kind of archer we love to get. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's the last seconds of everything's coming together. We've got a couple things going on. I've just finished tallying who the 2024 Artist of the Year is gonna be. Um, can't wait to share that with all you guys. Waterfalls are being tested. I know Aaron and Laura are inside. I can't wait to plug it in and make sure this thing is killing their expectations. Hey, we are ready. Do the kids wanna lead the way? Do you guys know how to get there? All right, let's go for the big reveal. Oh, Samantha, look. more thankful for each one of your talent and skill and it's so much more grand and so much um, more epic <laughs> than I ever could dream and I should know better with you know your designs always turn out that way and all of you guys just did such a beautiful job who over on this side is the reigning 2024 aquascape artist of the year but how about a hand for all of the regional finalists that are here today <laughs> me 2024 Artist of the Year goes to the Fuentes Brothers. <laughs> Oh my God, you guys, congratulations. 2024 Artist of the Year. You've only been building ponds for how long? Uh, four years now. Four years. I found Greg's channel, binge watched all his videos. I didn't know ponds could look like this. Became obsessed. I started looking at all the Artists of the Year's channels and then um, decided to open my own pond company. Tell me about the conversation with your brother. Like, how did, like, and oh, what were you I'll, doing at the time? I'll tell you exactly how that went. All right. So, he was living in Vermont. He came back home one summer and there's six tons of rock sitting in our driveway. And he's like, I need help moving this to the backyard. <laughs> I was like, we're building a pond. And he's like, what? And he's like, I'm digging a hole. I gotta get the rock in here. We're building a pond. We still have that pond in our backyard. It's the worst looking pond we've ever yeah, built. Yeah, I don't want anyone to see it. But it's, you it's have to of, leave it, it right? That's yeah, the thing where it's where like, you yeah. yeah. Well, you guys, congratulations. You so deserve it. Thank you. Yeah, can't Thank wait you. to see uh, where you guys uh, land after this.
Whew. Right? Oh uh, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> we finished it. And it's amazing. You love it? It's like it's better than I could have ever dreamed it up to be. I feel like sometimes we come in and we're almost like a little tornado and there's no way for you to ease into it. It's just like we're just going. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that? Well, much better this time <laughs> than the first time. I feel like this time I had 100% confidence. Oh, good. And you and your team. I mean, it's just you guys are all such professionals and so good at what you do um, that I just like whatever ends up happening is going to be amazing. And it is just created this amazing vacation destination spot in the backyard. We had three truckloads of boulders, so I think we were just over 60 tons. I think we had eight tons of cobbles, about 20 tons of gravels. You know, we're cutting trees down yeah. in your yard back I got over some, here. Some pruning done <laughs> as well. <laughs> and in three days, we built a hundred foot stream with literally the best team in the world. It was such a fun experience. Uh, the dream team, the dream stream. I think we nailed it. Uh, uh, yes. I know half of the guys over there told me this is the best project they've ever been a part of, which means a lot because they're this is the best of the best of the best in the world at what they do and for them to say this is the coolest feature they've ever built means a lot to me hopefully it means a lot to oh, you and Aaron absolutely. and you know yeah um, I can't wait to see how you develop it how it matures how it grows in you are so amazing thank you so thank much you. for letting us come out here and oh, do this oh any day yeah. <laughs> this one will definitely go down in the memory books as one of my favorite of all times and not just because of Laura because of the incredible certified aquascape contractor network those CACs of each area coming together to work so seamlessly like it was just such a memorable experience to see those guys just follow along with the design uh, it was a design that laura and i've been working on for about a year we'll be talking about this for a long time hopefully you guys are talking about this for a long time too tell me what your favorite part is tell me what you think is going to be most memorable for laura and the future of her new water feature if you want to see more construction projects make sure you subscribe to team aquascape give us a big thumbs up and we'll see you soon